Hello everyone and welcome to Werven's World in part 9 of my tutorial series on X3 Terran Conflict. Uh, last couple of episodes we made a lot of money in order to start building up our fleet and uh, today I'll be talking a bit about some pieces of es essential equipment that we would like to have on ships that we're flying. Um, so if you go to your current ship uh, and you can see uh, either in info or in freight but there's a small difference uh, so if I click on info here you will see built-in uh, components which is a cargo life support system in the in the case of this ship um, other ships will not have this cargo life support systems and you need to install them and then they will show up at the installed ship extensions if you go to freight you will not see the built-in things you will only see the installed ship extension so now we won't see the cargo life extension support so um, what kind of uh, ship extensions would we like to have well the first one uh, is th actually the cargo life support system and that basically allows us to uh, transport people into our cargo holds uh, so sometimes you get missions so some taxi missions basically and you can only accept those if you have a cargo life support system uh, we would also like to have the fight command software mk2 in this case because uh, if we will now go to our autopilot you can see that our turret is still set to protect the ship but we would like it to be on missile defense so let's say we would be attacked uh, then we can try to jump away while our turret protects us against uh, missiles that are fired at us and this is only possible when you have the fight command software mk2 and so not with the mk1 so i can click on this now and now the turret will defend us against missiles so what's more um, there's the jump uh, jump drive as you've seen that's a really handy thing it needs energy cells to jump and you can jump to sectors that you've already explored and it really helps you with completing missions faster but also generally being faster at everything um, then there's the trading system extension as you've seen in the uh, first couple of episodes it's really handy to make other ships uh, trade for you or to sell ships from a distance and all that kind of stuff very handy there's a triplex scanner that we bought which allowed us to to see much more um, on on this map so you saw this this gray circle that was way bigger than it normally would be and uh, it just increases your scanner range uh, you also want to have a um, where are we the triplex scanner we did so then there's the singularity engine time accelerator that's the one that allows you to press j and in order to speed up time so that is really 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 important otherwise the game is going to go very very slow for you um a bio scanner is quite nice it allows you to scan for life forms in other people's cargo holds but it also allows you to see the skills of marines that you might hire in order to do boarding missions um so that's very very handy uh, the boost extension is quite uh, handy as well. I'll show you how it works. So normally you can uh, accelerate uh, with X and Z. So or accelerate is X and uh, decelerate is Z. You can also press tab in order to um, immediately set your max speed so that it, it accelerates until max speed. But as you can see here, the acceleration is going quite quick, uh, slowly. So when I press backspace again to go to zero, I can show you how the boost extension works that's not if you just press tap but hold tap then the acceleration will go much faster your maximum speed will remain the same but your acceleration will be much faster so check this I'll, I'll hold tap now and I'm already at full speed so that's what the boost extension is extremely handy for it's a good thing to have then there's the video announcement goggles they're quite fun to have so you can zoom in with left alt sometimes you have to press it a couple of times and if you don't do anything for a couple of seconds it will go back it just allows you to zoom in which is fun um, so I'll dock back here So here's our freight. Um, so now we've seen all the the essential ship extensions. So best buys locator, best selling price locator is not uh, not essential for yourself uh, at the moment. 
So uh, then there's some other ones that we don't have at the moment yet. So there's a mineral scanner which we can buy uh, at any Ark and Equipment dock which allows us to scan asteroids for their mineral content. And this is handy for yourself if you want to build up a mining system. But it's also handy uh, for missions that say like, hey, can you scan some asteroids for me? So then you can do that with that uh, extension. Um, there's also a, a freight scanner. Um, and freight scanners allow you to see what's in other people's cargo holds. Um, you are not allowed to do this in systems that are uh, governed um, by a race. For example, here Argon and uh, this is Parana uh, Paranit. Uh, you're not allowed to do it there because uh, the police is not happy if you just randomly start scanning other people's stuff. However, if you're in pirate um, uh, pirate areas, which are actually here next to Atreus Cloud, there will be some that we will be visiting today. Um, you can scan to your heart's content, nobody cares. Um, so you can scan the cargo hold and you can see what they're carrying. And that can have two things. Um, you can see if they have valuable freight and you can start being a pirate. You can chase them out of their ship and take over the ship and take all that cargo as well. Or um, you can also get missions uh, that uh, tell you, hey, can you scan for illegal wares uh, and see if people are carrying illegal wares and sell us that information. Um, you are allowed to scan in other um, systems by doing uh, by buying an enforcement law enforcement license. If I go here in Terracorp HQ, I can press trade. I can buy an Argon law enforcement license. Um, that means that I can uh, basically shoot uh, pirates and um, uh, scan cargo and all that kind of stuff. I can basically uh, act like police in Argon. Uh, uh, systems now. So I'll buy that. So if you're not sure in what kind of system you are, you can always press uh, comma or like the universe map and um, when you click on a system you will see here the race uh, which is governing uh, that system. So now at the moment I can only do act like police in, uh, in Argon space. So um, that was the uh, freight scanner. Then a very nice thing to have as well is a docking computer. And a docking computer allows you to dock without actually going through the effort of docking. Basically, you could just be anywhere, I think, within five kilometers of the station. And then when you press dock, you're automatically docked immediately, which saves a lot of time and is very nice to have. Um, another um, thing that's really good to have is a transporter device which allows you to, to basically exchange goods with people that are close to your ship but you don't need to actually dock with people uh, and that kind of stuff so you can actually just be next to another ship and trade exchange good with, um, goods with them. So those are um, basically all the things uh, you want to have. You want to have a cargo life support, you want to have fight command software, you want to have a jump drive, you want to have a trading system extension, a triplex scanner, a time accelerator, a bio scanner, a transporter device, a boost extension, a mineral scanner. Uh, you can have navigation command software if you want, which allows you to jump to specific uh, stations instead of to, um, uh, to jump gates. Uh, you want to have a freight scanner and video enhancement goggles and a docking computer. However, we don't have all of those things yet, right? So at the TerraCorp HQ, uh, you can actually buy uh, the bioscanner and transporter device. So I'm not sure why I'm actually flying away from it. Uh, to buy the, the, the transporter device now. You can see here, transported device not installed. Let's take it. It was 56,000 credits, but we've got enough. Um, trade command software MK3 is really nice to have, but uh, mostly for uh, our traders that we will be hiring at some point. So I won't um, uh, buy that yet. Um, so for a mineral scanner, you can basically go to any Argon equipment dock. Um, we don't have one here, but we have one in, uh, where are we now, Home of Light. There is one in Argon Prime, right? So let's go there. And find the gate, Argon Prime, head through. 
We could of course use our jump drive to immediately go to Argon Prime, but um, yeah, that's a waste of energy crystals, I think, because we're next to that system now. Okay, no so the good thing about these um, all these extensions is you can trade them between ships. So let's say you get a better ship and you don't want this one anymore, you can just hold them over to, to other ships. Um, that's really nice. Although with some restrictions, because some need uh, bigger cargo holds than others. Um, for example, here this ore collector needs you to have a XL um, cargo hold, which we don't have, so we can't actually collect ore. However, uh, we can get a mineral scanner. And we can also get a freight scanner. Perfect. There we go. Uh, do we want anything else here? Nah. We don't, don't need all that kind of stuff. That's all for... Uh, for NPCs that we might hire, right? So uh, the docking computer is something else, really. So uh, I'll show you why. If I now go to... A, uh, you can buy docking computers in Paranet equipment docks. Um, so let's go to Paranet Prime here. Uh, so that's uh, autopilot, command console, navigation, jump to sector, Paranet Prime. Then we'll slowly jump in there. And I really suggest getting a docking computer quite early because it just saves so much time. You could just fly next to a station and press dock and then you're docked there. Now the problem is um, they do have an equipment dock here. But let's say I want to land there. And they're like, nope, negative. Your presence aboard is neither desirable nor welcome. So actually the Paranids don't like me at all and if I, um, Paranid is kind of like a religious uh, race and if I go to my pilot status I can see here I am a Paranid unholy nomad. So uh, now is actually the time to up, um, to get better uh, standing with the Paranid in order to buy this docking computer. One way of doing that is basically flying through Paranid uh, sectors and hoping you get missions. Uh, there's none here at the moment, but um, for example if you go to Emperor Mines there might be some missions there that you can do and you can improve your standing like that with the Paranids. Alternatively you can do missions in pirate sectors and you will gain uh, reputation with the pirates as well as the races that give you the missions. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'll be jumping to Atreus's cloud and then we can go to um, pirate zones and uh, see what happens there. So uh, oh. we go to autopilot, command console, navigation, jump to sector, Atreus's cloud. Oh, that actually costs 90 energy cells, so we need to get some energy cells. I'll buy some here. I think there was a... yeah, there's a solar power plant, right? So let's first fill up on energy cells. Here's a couple of missions. If you want, y you can, as I s uh, said before, you can just deviate from this stuff at any time you want. You can start doing missions and, and get more money uh, like that. It's, it's no problem at all. You have to play the game uh, the way you like it. Because what I'm doing, as I said before, is kind of just a, a sequence of steps that allows you to, to get a lot of money early on. Uh, but it's kind of, it's just that, right? Like it's a really a sequence of steps. Um, so during these tutorials, you will also kind of find out how to do specific things within the game. So you can also make money your own way. Um, so that's completely up to you. So I'll buy some energy cells. Let's buy like 250 or something. And now we should be able to fly to Atreus's cloud. So 
So shift C, uh, navigation nine, Atreus is cloud. And as you can see, we only discovered two gates here, but there's actually more gates. So now we'll fly there. And I'll actually show you another place you could have bought a freight, uh, freight scanner, which is in a pirate base in a Atreus' cloud. So some pirate bases are neutral to you and some are uh, not neutral to you. If they're not neutral to you, you will have to hack the pirate base um, in order to make them friendly to you. And if you uh, want to hack them, you need to search for one of these kind of missions, like the light bulbs, uh, within three sectors of that base, and they can uh, that mission can be uh, paying them 250,000 credits for them to hack a station, which can be very, very useful uh, because pirates have sometimes cool systems that sell cool things. Um, these pirates here are not very friendly to me, for example, but I'll just avoid them for the moment. So one thing I just want to show you, we're actually not uh, not going to the east, but far in the east of Atreus' cloud is a uh, pirate base. So it, it often pays off to really s uh, explore sectors, because there's <laughs> often something hidden far away. I think it's somewhere there. There it is. So we could dock there. Let's see what they have for sale. In there. Trade. So here they have a cargo life support system, but we already have that uh, built into this. They have uh, the freight scanner, system override software, which I've actually never used, so I'm not sure what it does. Um, but uh, you can also buy a lot of illegal stuff at, at uh, pirate bases like slaves, which at the moment they actually don't have, which means they will actually pay a lot of money for it. Uh, you can get space weed and sunrise flowers, all stuff you're basically not allowed to, <laughs> to have. If the police scans you in other systems, they will uh, be very angry at you. Um, so often if you buy these, it's good to use your jump drive to immediately go where you need to be, because um, it's not fun to be uh, hated by the police. So, anyway, now that we know where this pirate base is, a bit of a tangent, I am going to go a bit south. Farnham's legend. There. Fly through Farnham's legend. And that's where the, the pirate sector start, because as you can see, this is still a, um, a border... Uh, oh, uh, a boron... Uh, place there so now you can see here this is a pirate place so you can basically do whatever you want here and it won't have uh, much <laughs> much effect um, so I am going to try to raise some reputations and I will just be doing missions and I'll basically tune back in whenever something interesting happens. Uh, I really want to uh, get my Paranit reputation up. So here is um, actually a um, mission which is the fright scan which we needed the fright scanner for right? So basically Pirate police having pulled back to core sector deals to deal with rising people trafficking. We wish to use this opportunity for a nice, nice little earner on the outskirts. We're in need of a skilled pilot to scan any freighter in border pirate sections. So we have to scan for valuable freight and uh, the difficulty is average. We only have 15 minutes and we only get 4% uh, of the wares average worth. So if we take this then um, as you can see here we're in a pirate border region then we can just go to any kind of ship um, like here's actually a nice patrol going on or a patrol, a line of ships and we can just scan their freight uh, scan, see? you have to be closer a bit, but they don't uh, very often have valuable freight but Yeah. There. 
see if these guys all well, they don't have much interesting. But there's more ships around. Mission completed. Here, we've been monitoring your sensor data. You managed to six scan six ships with a total cargo worth of a lot of money. Um, so now they know. So this is in a pirate thing, right? So I'm, uh, I was actually mistaken. I wasn't scanning for illegal freight. I was actually just scanning their cargo holds for stuff to plunder for these pirates. Uh, so they say, I think the plundering will keep us busy for some time. Thank you. You've earned 178,000 credits for this job. So that was very nice. And uh, it already... Um, my pilot status... Uh, where are the... I forgot what I got the mission from. So I'm not entirely sure <laughs> which uh, reputation I got now. Anyway... Um, so next time I'll have to pay attention to that. Uh, but we got some money, so that's nice. So let's see if there's more missions. So here is a mission, Asteroid Scans Needed. Um, so he wants us to scan all these things uh, in these different uh, areas. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what these two are. Um, but basically, you have uh, we have a mineral scanner, I think we bought one. Uh, mineral scanner, there we go. So we can try this. Oh. I'm being attacked. Mm -hmm. I'll take it all. Job. Two asteroids in Brennan's Triumph. So let's go there. So we have to scan this one. It has silicon in it. And we can scan this one. Yes. We go to split fire. So here is actually a um, plasma burst generator Forge Alpha, which is a great thing. It sells uh, kind of flamethrowers <laughs> in space. Um, but as you can see, this uh, thing is, is hostile to us, so we can't dock there and buy anything. So for that, we need one of those uh, hacking missions, which show up as one of those light bulbs. So those would be good to, uh, to keep an eye out for. Um, there's none here. So here is a uh, light bulb mission, so it can be within three sectors of where it is, right? So it isn't done as chance, and now I'm in Brennan's Triumph, so here's a light bulb. Haliloni. Haliloni, ah, yeah. I need someone to hack a station. Please hack the plasma burst generator forge. The plasma burst generator forge alpha for me. So 184,000 credits, which we have. So now she did that, right? And it's not available anymore, so you can't hack all the stations at once. So then we go back. And as you can see here, it is uh, now not uh, um, hostile to us anymore. So we can just up there. You can actually also see it like this. And I actually still have a couple in stock, so I will buy some of those. So sometimes they might need things like space fuel and um, stuff like that, so. Um, you might need to supply that. So I will buy some plasma burst generators. I'm just gonna buy four. There we go. Now we need to go to Brian's trunk again. do that in time. 19 minutes, okay. Talking to the automated interaction system. Hmm. Uh. Talking to the system. There, yeah, that's the Tel So that was 91%. I think profit chance, right? Uh the profit opportunity 91%. So that should go up now. Now 
now she says you have gained recognition. So now we are a utility company helper. So that's nice. And I think I saw a Paranid, um, which you are 46 Holy Nomad at the moment. And this guy is a Paranid. Ooh, and it's also scanning asteroids. So that should be fairly easy for us to do. Uh, especially now that we've um, explored something, so we could even jump to areas. So, let's take that job. Because it would be great to get some recognition up. I was actually thinking, just for the sake of the video, to just jump to Paranid Space and get uh, missions there. I kind of like these pirate areas, because you can get cool missions, and um, they're split between the races, so you can get a lot of reputation of different races quickly. Maybe for the sake of the video, I should just do it in parallel. Ooh, it's a big pair. Oh, it's actually not this one, is it? <laughs> What's the fight going on there? I'll just keep out of the way of them. Here's a big capital ship fighting. Pirate Carrick. Pirate Carrick. I always get sidetracked in this game. Wow. Well, what's it fighting with? As long as it doesn't shoot at me, I'll be happy. So the reason why the Paranet actually don't like us is more from a lore perspective. It's not just random, uh, like different factions are um, allied with, um, with each other or don't like each other. And the Paranit happen to not like the Argon at all when I play as an Argon character, so I really need to prove myself in their eyes to, uh, for them to trade with me. So it's not just random. Let's see, so we were... I keep forgetting. Paranit on Holy Nomad, 46%. Oh, this guy. Burnet and only Nomad 60%, so it didn't go up that much, but at least a little bit. Um, and we would have we got some money out of it. Yeah, so there's a lot of missions I can do here, but I think just for the sake of the video, I'll just go to Paranet Prime and uh, get stuff done there because this takes a bit of time to, to get. Um, everything leveled up. So, how much energy cells? 80. I think the here the Paranet thing start. Argon, Paranet, yeah. Energy cells 60, so that's perfect. So one thing that's quite important uh, if you're going to do missions in, in Paranit um, space is that at first they might not like you at all depending on the missions you did before. And that means that uh, they will not give you any missions in systems that are uh, labeled as core. So Paranit core uh, things, you're just basically not allowed to dock there at all, you cannot get missions. So you'll need to increase your reputation with them some uh, in another way, and you can do that this for example in border um, areas because you are allowed to dock there um, and you can increase your recognition in two ways you can increase it through trading so you basically can just buy energy cells for example which will um, increase your um, recognition a little bit you can also sell things um, or you can do missions with uh, parent people wherever like for example in the pa pirate areas where we were or wherever um, which will also increase your reputation a bit. Once your reputation goes up by one, um, when they don't, when you're not unholy uh, nomad anymore, then they will also give you missions in um, in the core systems. 
So that's very important. So uh, then once you're in the core systems, you're very likely to run into more Paranids than any other race. And when you um, are there, you're going to increase your repetition fairly fast. So um, that's a very important thing to know. So as you can see here, I've done a lot of missions and I am now a Paranid friend of Priest, which should mean that we can now buy our docking computer. Um, so I've been doing missions mostly in, in Paranid space. I made them friendly by trading a little bit uh, with their stations in border regions and then I did missions uh, in, in Paranid space. So but you can also do missions in, in, in the pirate space and then you can also do like the scanning of cargo holds and all that kind of stuff. So it's really up to you. Uh, also, you don't even really need to do all this. Uh, I just really like my docking computer. Uh, I think it, uh, it makes the game much faster and, uh, and, and nicer because I'm not a huge fan of docking myself. Um, so that's basically why I wanted to do that. So now I'm going to an equipment dock and we should be able to buy uh, this docking computer. There we go, docking computer. So we can install that now. Uh, we don't need any of this other stuff. Nah. So, um, ah, they're also out of impulse ray emitters. So. Now I can show you what the docking computer does actually. It's so basically, here's a station, I would like to dock with it, autopilot dock at, and I'm immediately docked. So that just makes it so much nicer for me. Um, so now that we've done that, so now we've got uh, all the essential equipment. I'll just put up the list again. We want a... Oh wait, I also uh, will show it. There. So we want a cargo life support system. We want fight command software. We want jump drive. We want um, the trading system extension. We want a triplex scanner. Um, a singularity engine time accelerator, a bioscanner, a transporter device, a boost extension, a mineral scanner, a navigation command software. You can take, I haven't bought it myself yet. I um, also don't think it's the most important part. Um, so that's up to yourself. You can want a freight scanner and then video enhancement goggles if you want, they're not that important. Uh, and the docking computer again it's completely up to yourself so now basically we've got uh, a ship completely ready for whatever we want to do with it um, so that's going to be very very nice so now that we have all our uh, all our ships uh, or sorry all our ship parts uh, we're ready to buy some more ships uh, and we can basically transport all the stuff we just bought into the new ship that we want to use and then we can send off the ship in order to get some more parts uh, and then next time we'll also buy a transporter ship so we can basically build a bit of a mobile base um, for ourselves so, um, yeah, I hope this ex uh, episode was useful. I'm sorry if it was a bit chaotic, um, because I first went to the pirates and then decided to do stuff in Paranet Prime and all that. Um, but at least now we've got our uh, reputation up and uh, we bought some, some interesting parts. So, with that, I hope you find it useful and see you next time.